Hello, today we're looking into the fantastical world of Roald Dahl. He published many stories with eccentric characters that both adults and children enjoy to read about. Although he wrote in various genres, he's still remembered as the writer who imagined lickable wallpapers and the chocolate river. Let's speak to Tom Solomon now. He wrote a book titled Roald Dahl's Marvelous Medicine. Hi there, it's lovely to have you with us today. So, let's start with this. Tell us why you think Roald Dahl is such a loved author. He wrote some fantastic books. I think it's as simple as that. He wrote some brilliant children's books. And also, he wrote some fabulous adult short stories that people are not so familiar with. Though, in the UK, they were all put together and put on the television as the tales of the unexpected on Saturday nights. But, of course, the children's books are, are why he's so well known. Mm -hmm. And I think what many people don't know is that he was actually fascinated by medicine and science, right? He was, yes. Yeah. So I got to know Roald Dahl towards the end of his life. I was a junior doctor in Oxford and was looking after him and found out all these amazing things that he was involved in to do with medicine. He invented a medical device to treat water on the brain. That's hydrocephalus. Uh, he became a very strong campaigner for measles vaccination, and he was always also very interested in stroke. And all of these things followed some tragedies that happened in his life. Tell us more about, uh, you know, these inventions, the scientific inventions he came up with. Well, the first one was to treat water on the brain. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, his son was involved in a road tra traffic accident and had a head injury. And this resulted in water on the brain, which is when there's too much fluid in the brain and it can cause swelling. And this was treated by putting in a, what we call a shunt, which is just like a drain. And the problem was the drain, the valve in the drain kept blocking. And so the, the rolled son had to have an operation for that. And they had to keep operating to try and unblock this valve. And Roald Dahl said to the doctors, well, isn't there anything better than this? And they said, no, this is all we have. So what he decided to do is invent one with a, a toy maker and an engineer. And this valve was called the Wade Dahl Till valve, and it was used on thousands of children around the world. And he was self-taught, wasn't he? Yes, all his interest in medicine just came from uh, his fascination with many things in life, including medicine. Um, and when his child was ill, he found out all about these treatments. He went and watched the operations being done and, and worked out that they could create a better valve that would not keep blocking. Mm, and um, Tom, I, I've read that he wanted to be a doctor, actually, but I don't know if that's correct. So you knew him personally. You wrote a book on him. Tell us um, whether he really wanted to be a doctor. He, he did. I think he, well, he, he, said, he said to me if he'd not been a writer, he would have liked to have been a doctor. And um, I actually met him in hospital when I was w working there and, and, and we became uh, good friends. I can remember very well the night I met him and I was busy working on the hospital computer and he went past a few times and, and and it was clear that he was wondering why I wasn't paying great attention to him and eventually he stopped and asked me what I was doing and we got chatting. I was actually writing up some malaria research then and he'd had malaria himself so he was very interested in that work and um, after a while he said to me have you read any of my books and I said well I've not read any but I love the film of the Jungle Book of course, the Jungle Book was written by Rudyard Kipling, not not by him. Uh, and he had a few moments to, to work out whether I was very ignorant or was this a, a great joke. And he decided it was a joke and he roared with laughter. And the nurses came along by night and said, shh, be quiet, be quiet. And um, uh, so we became friends after that. And every third night when I was on call, we would talk about, about medicine and about life. And tell us what kind of a person he was in real life. Well, I, uh, I found he was great fun to have on the wards. Um, he, uh, he would come up with some pranks even then, even though he was quite unwell. Um, he, at one stage, he, he was rather upset because the nurses, it, 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 there was one of these fashions and it became fashionable that the nurses, instead of wearing uniforms, were told they should wear their own clothes because that would make the patients feel more comfortable. And he thought this was crazy, one, because it meant nobody knew who was a doctor or a, a nurse or a member of staff or a, a, a visitor, a relative. And then also all their clothes were, were, were getting, you know, nursing can be a messy business. So what he did was he asked his wife to go to Marks and Spencer's and buy a load of clothes. And he laid them all out on his bed and they had like a jumble sale. <laughs> Nurses were just choosing what they wanted. So it was like that. He would always come up with a practical solution to a problem. 
It's, it's very interesting. Apparently, he was a fun person to be around. Um, I want to go back to uh, the scientific inventions that you mentioned uh, in the beginning of our interview. I wonder whether these inventions are still in use. So his wife, Patricia, had a stroke. Um, and after she recovered, she had an operation as well. And after that, Roald was just told, well, that's it. You know, we have to see how she does, see if she gets better. She couldn't talk at the time. She couldn't walk. And he said to me, you know, his children were getting six hours of schooling a day. And how would his wife ever learn to talk again if she was just left in a corner of the room? So he set up with friends and family uh, for her to have six hours of education, people getting her talking again. And it worked. She got her speech back. She was able to walk again. And everybody, you know, it seemed like a miracle. And everybody wanted to know how they'd done it. So they wrote a book and then eventually uh, created a charity. And this charity became what we now know as the Stroke Association, which is a very big charity all around the world, supporting and rehabilitating people who've had strokes. Wow, amazing. And um, lastly, uh, tell us how, I mean, these, the, the, the story with his wife, of course, but then his inventions and his interest in science and medicine reflected on his writing, if it did. It, well, it did, yes. So, for example, when his wife, Patricia, was learning how to talk again, she came up with all these funny words. She couldn't quite get the words right. She'd said things like an obolong for a drink and She'd say, you make me skitch, meaning you're making me angry. Uh, he thought these were hilarious and he wrote them all down. And then eventually, of course, these became gobblefunk, the language of the BFG when he wrote that book. Uh, and, and the BFG had difficulty with language, just, just like Patricia did. And quite a lot of events that happened in his life like this did, did work his way through to, the, to his books. The other really important uh, um, thing he was involved with was vaccination, which, of course, is so topical at the moment. And his one of his daughters sadly died of measles in the brain, measles encephalitis, before vaccines were available. And so once they did become available, he became a great campaigner for, for vaccination and he, he encouraged people to get their kids vaccinated. And of course, now, once again, we're seeing how vaccination is so important for infectious diseases. Wow. OK, this was all so interesting. But unfortunately, this is all the time we have. Tom Solomon, thanks a lot for joining us on Showcase today.